Imagine with me for a second, and you can skip this if you'd like and just get to the show. But imagine if the Steelers or whatever your football team is, they were down by 21 points going in to the last 10 minutes of the game. And they're about to score uh, a field goal to win the game. Now listen, listen to this. Sissoko. Comes to Deli Alley, through to Lucas Moura! Lucas Moura has fired first through to Madrid to the Champions League final! And that is Tottenham Hotspur beating Ajax 3-2 to two to send them to the Champions League final for the first time in history, baby! So I felt, that was yesterday, I felt good, I felt real good. <clears throat> so I'm in a good mood, I'm in a real great mood today. And that was, what? A minute? If, if you skipped it, you missed out. That was great. <laughs> okay, no one cares. Welcome to Usually Wrong. This is episode 58. This is with Trevor Austin. So it's a great, really great fun episode. I really enjoy talking to him. Uh, I have shows coming up. You can go to natenolf.com for all that. But I bored you with stuff you don't care about. Unless you're a soccer fan. Unless you are. And you're a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Maybe you enjoyed that a lot. Uh, but you can go to natenolf.com, look at all the website stuff. Uh, I'm going uh, to be doing the Whiskey Bear Comedy Festival. Show in Irwin this Saturday is, is what I really want to mention if you're out that way. Come out to that. It's going to be a good lineup. Trevor Austin, I did not know. I, I thought he was doing comedy for a little bit longer. He started this year virtually. It was a New Year's resolution for him. And we talk about it, and he is so good. Uh, he plays the guitar during his act, which is uh, it's something I haven't really seen around this <laughs> scene. Around this scene, uh, very funny, very fun guy. Won the Pittsburgh Improv Competition, uh, the one that you know I won. I won last year. <laughs> he won it this year. It's great. Uh, this, this is a fun one. Rate the show five stars. Subscribe to it. I would love that. I would love if you did. And I think I said episode fifty-eight. I think this is fifty-nine. Hold on, I'm gonna stop this. I did say 58. It's episode 59 with Trevor Austin. When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and forget the money. Because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You will be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. three we're just like it's getting out of control yeah so i don't know do you watch much tv let's just start yeah, if you could hold the microphone like right yeah. here right here too that's cool the best i gotta uh so you like the studio I oh it's great place, dude thank you it feels it's more like a studio about it that's what i feel like i've been going back and forth i've had people at my apartment the last couple episodes yeah. too and then i'm like i don't know if i like I like it, but I like sitting on a couch with people and talking yeah. to because it, it feels like a conversation. Yeah. But I think my job as somebody who is doing a show is like, okay, how can I make any environment yeah, yeah. easy and relaxed and a conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't matter. We're fucking stand-up comedians. Yeah, we should be yeah. able to make it an environment yeah. relaxed. I've certainly and done I've done worse rooms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm going to use headphones for a second. You're good. Just to Do be, your thing. check levels. I always feel bad. Oh no, yeah, you're like, good. <laughs> like I'm, like I'm, I'm holding out on you. How are you in general? Well, are quite well? well. Yeah, medium well. You're medium well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, it's just a stupid answer I give anytime <laughs> someone asks me how I am. Medium well. How long have you been doing comedy? Like you're one of hmm. those people that I, I, you popped up to me real quick. Like I didn't, I we, I we've never had a conversation. Before. Yeah, like, yeah. Very little. Well, how long have you been doing comedy? I started doing comedy taking it seriously for a new year's resolution so i started uh, doing year. it really yeah december 20th was the first mic i did <laughs> really yeah yeah why 
you mean ser- so seriously? Well, let me yeah, let me rephrase. The first mic I did went so poorly. It was about a year and a half ago Where? that I quit. Where was it? Uh, I went to Hambones for the first time. Yeah, went on fifty seventh. I'm sure <laughs> you know, and it was uh, it was such a struggle, and yeah. it was something I thought like, oh, everybody has always told me I'm hilarious. Yeah, this will oh, be easy, the, and yeah, I had like a full blown identity crisis. Isn't like, that so funny though? Yeah, like that really is it. I was told uh, in my friend group too. Like I was the funniest of my friend group, and I remember talking to a buddy of mine who was like, "We're gonna go to open mics and stuff," and then you go and you get the shit kicked out of it, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so funny. T- and part of it, and I've talked about it on this too, is you you think you're the funny person in your friend group, and then you go to Hambones and see a million other people yeah, yeah, yeah. who are way funnier than you. Yeah, yeah. It's like being the best high school basketball player in Iowa. Exactly. And then you get to college and you're like, oh, wow, all these kids are the best at their high school. That's exactly right. So yeah. what what actually made you want to start doing comedy? I suppose that. I, I wanted to do it my whole life. I didn't know it exactly, but everybody watches stand-up comedy. And if you have any sense of humor and you think, I could do that. Oh, yeah, I you know, And yeah. I really felt that way. I struggled so bad the first few times. I was like calling my friends to be like, you told me I was funny. People would tell me, oh, you're so funny. You should do stand up. Is just like playing the guitar at a campfire, yeah. goofing around. So I went up with a ukulele, actually. I've heard you, d- you yeah. did a ukulele recently. Yeah, yeah. I do it. I bring the ukulele to all the mics and smaller rooms. Do you? And then, like, at the improv, I did the guitar. It just carries better, better mm-hmm. sound. So I can do the piano, too. Can I a tell you something? Bit. You look like a guitar player. Yeah, I yeah. think it's the hair. You look like a guitar player. Yeah, it's player. a little bit of all that. <laughs> it's um, I'm building a brand here. It's not. That's part of it, right? I hardly play. I always say I'm half That's of a musician, half of a comic. So what? What do you mean? I'm not that good at either, but when you <laughs> when you put them together, uh, it's, it seems to be working. So I'm it's happy an act. about it. Yeah, yeah, it's an act. How long have you been playing the guitar? Self taught. Self taught, and I mean very self taught. It's like one of those people who took a year in high school Spanish. Like, oh uh, yeah, un poquito. Oh for sure. I can. Uh, like you just jam through tabs because I that's yeah. what I did. I sat in my parents' basement. I just was like, I want to learn. To play this, yeah, like I want to yeah. learn to play Blackbird, and then I'm fucking done. Yep, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've started, pl- and I've been playing for ten years, and it's like, uh, there's there's a real asset to being able to play a musical instrument, separated yeah. from comedy, but yeah, just anything, being able to yeah. play. Can you read sheet music? Not even guitar? close. I can't do it. I can play by ear a little bit. Yeah, um, that's it. And I learned how to play the guitar. Pretty much to see if I could impress a drunk girl at a campfire. That's hilarious. Got there quick and then yeah. didn't didn't progress. Isn't you it know? funny that you like you can do that pretty easy? No, I yeah, shouldn't yeah, say yeah. drunk girl, but you can impress people in general. Yeah, yeah. If you have musical ability, you'll you'll hit like your first ceiling pretty quickly. If you if you have rhythm Amen. and you can do it, it's I I compare it to like playing a sport. If you want to play a sport, but you just simply are too unathletic, it's yeah. never going to come there. Now, if you can, it. if you can drum on the steering wheel in time, you can figure some m- instrument out and uh-huh. play enough of it. I was in the top 100 to 200 best rock band drummers in the world at one point. Do you remember that video game? Wait, the rock you band. Saying, when yeah, you like, said that, I was like, "Oh, you drum too." Oh, yeah. But that that taught me a little bit about how to play the drums. Absolutely, Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero got me to learn. Oh my gosh! I was like, "This feels so cool," but I, it's like not the real deal. So yeah, man, it really did. I I beat through the fire and flames on expert. I was like, I need to fucking learn how to play guitar. I am not, I'm in eighth grade and I'm already yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. am not going to get laid playing, playing guitar. Hero. I have a joke about it too. Like I, <laughs> I say, if you beat through the fire and flames on expert, you didn't get to have sex for 15 years. <laughs> Cause that's really, that's really true. Cause I'm still kind of bragging about it. Right yeah. Now yeah. I'm too. hearing it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank by you the very way. much. I appreciate it. Have you seen the South park with yeah, guitar? Hero? That's one <laughs> yeah. of my favorite episodes. <laughs> I have. I, uh, I, do you remember like that lick at the beginning? Da, 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 I would hold the green button with my chin <laughs> and play it like that. <laughs> nice. So you have like a Hendrix of Guitar Hero. You're playing behind your ears. You have a little bit of showmanship. Well, you know, you got to do something to impress the ladies. And that's it. <laughs> Um, so you've been playing for you've been playing for a while, yeah, yeah. But I don't even look at it as uh, like I'm. Most of my best friends are musicians, and you know that keeps me in check to realize that I don't really play oh, play guitar. Yeah, like it, it, in a fantasy, the the thing I would really want to do is play in a band. That's like my favorite thing. But I don't right. quite have the musical chops for that. Right. Let me and, uh, ask you something and see if you relate to it. If you see somebody at a party playing the guitar and they yeah. are you, you can tell. 
they're like you like you don't know how they're like I play the guitar. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if they're better than me at the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they start playing and they're not as good. And you're like, you know what, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have right. to wonder often. <laughs> Most times someone can play more than me. But uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I can play, you know, campfire <laughs> hits, man. That's me. And uh yeah. that's pretty much what I do in my act too, is yeah. I just strum through some open chords and, and throw in what I really like about it is if you have like a list of one liners that you can't fit somewhere or they don't make sense in a joke, you can just strum three chords and all of a sudden right. they have a place to be. You know? Yeah, right. So. But your act is so unique even in the Pittsburgh scene. Like you, I have wanted to do stuff on the piano for a long time because I can yeah. play the piano. I was like, I want to do that. And you have even given me confidence to write music. Like yeah. seeing your act and seeing it nice. work has made me want to actually go do other stuff. Yeah, was yeah. coming into the scene, did you even think about it being more unique in the Pittsburgh scene when you started? Even When I started, year? what I thought was, the reason it took me so long to do it was, I can feel my peers rolling their eyes when I walk up on stage with an instrument. And it's like, oh, oh here's comics. a musical comic. Oh, yeah. 100%, man. Here's a musical comic. 100%. And I, what I've been told by a lot of people is that uh, I get through that and it's like, you know, the audience will tell you the truth. Is it, yeah. is it lame and corny that you're doing a musical act? Well, a lot of the comics often think so, I'm sure. But yeah. it, it, if, if it works, it works. So The thing you have to battle through and the thing that I've, I've, uh, it's held me back from like playing the guitar and stuff is you have to have really good jokes in yeah. inside of the music because yeah. I feel like some comics will take the guitar up there and use it as an excuse to make shitty jokes yeah, yeah you understand yeah. what I mean like I can name professional people that play the guitar and it's just a a guise for bad jokes so I think yeah. so like looking at you and having good jokes it's like that's a challenge yeah i try not to write songs i try to write jokes Fuck with it, music right. set to right. it it's more like a soundtrack to the jokes as opposed to yeah um but i've also noticed it definitely keeps you from writing it's it's easier you know it's like yeah. uh it's i there's a reason that i had immediate success with that and i still struggle with i mean every single night of the week i try to go out and hit a mic and do do it without an instrument, you know, yeah. or or at least half and half, you know, yeah. play a silly song or something to get people to listen, and then try to work on that because that's where my game needs improvement, you know, right. big time. So uh, it's it's coming along, but it's such a slower process. So I see that with, like, like you said, there's a reason I came from, you know, I only started in December and I've had some success. Yeah. The music makes it easier. That's that's exciting, man. Because I yeah. won that competition last year at the improv, yeah, the yeah. one that you won, and. There's whenever I won, I was a year into it at this point. So okay. you hit it earlier than I, even I did. But yeah. I even thought a year in was like early. I <laughs> and I won that. I, it was like early enough that I felt like I still felt like I should have. It should have been a longer time period before I yeah, felt confident yeah. with oh, this. Oh man, that's my you know entire. I mean? like, that's my entire existence <laughs> right now is being on shows I don't belong on and feeling like I never have a prayer to do okay, and it keeps going okay. So I've been you, blessed. Yeah, dude. Seriously, like you are like a pop star. You are like a child pop star. I feel like I because I felt that. I'm not saying just you. I say I kind of felt equal like, amount of mental damage too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying like like you are doing well early and that's not something that you see even especially in this scene like you see people struggle for eight or nine months before they'll talk to yeah. you at an open mic yeah and that's that's i think that's great yeah oh i can remember this isn't an interview but i'm, I'm no, just saying like, i think that's great i'm with you that there's a it's so funny because I've become friends with most of these comics now yeah but it wasn't more than a month and a half ago where i was like dude Chris Scriva said hello to me. Oh, <laughs> fucking you know? right, man. And so it's like, no way. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I, I'll have the same things with, like, Seneca Stone whenever I started. Oh, and, he's like, the Colin man. Chamberlain. They're all, they're all the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I completely understand. But it's like anything. It's like if you signed up for a rec soccer league, yeah. right? It's like, oh, they're so good. Yeah, When yeah, will yeah. they talk to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like anything. But with comedy, it's also we're all trying to build an act. I want these people to like me and then put me on shows. Yeah, yeah. That's and there's there's a business side of it that I I guess that's just part of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm still very much uh, feeling out the waters with that. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that <laughs> like, people ask me this question often like why did you start doing comedy? Yeah. You know, I think you even 
uh, hinted at it or alluded to it when you were like, so how long have you been doing this? So like, what what was my reason or what made me want to start doing comedy? And I don't really have an answer to that question because it's it's uh, it's a layered thing. Like I was like, do I want affirmation from others? Do I want attention? Yeah. I was like, I think it's some of those things, but it's not. That's not it. Yeah. And I really try to get to like the core issue of anything, get down to the root of something. So it was, why am I doing stand up? Do I uh, do I love bringing laughter to people? I think that's a little bit of it. But the, to simplify it all the way down, I was like, I want to have fun, you know. Yeah. And I try to really remind myself of that. <laughs> like it's supposed to be fun, you know. Yeah. So I just and wanted to start having a little fun and and making friends. That's probably been my favorite part of it is meeting yeah. like minded people. And it's funny that you say that, man. Like I've. I've I've actually thought about that a lot in the last month. Do you know those master classes? I don't. Okay, so they're like like professional people. Like no, they'll I know. teach you. They'll I've you seen have like the podcast classes. commercials now that I yeah came back yeah to yeah. Me. They have like Steve Martin and they have like. But I wa I I've probably watched the trailer to the Timbaland one about four hundred times because uh, it's it's funny to see him like make uh what was the Jay Z song da, 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 da. Dirt Off Your Shoulders okay. like he produced that and stuff. And I, he says one thing even in the, tra- in the trailer. This is weird, but it's it's funny to me. It, he's like, you just got to have fun with it, man. Once you're having fun with it, that's how you know you got something. Yeah. And that, when he said that, that like that stuck to me. Because I, I get too in my head when I'm writing, and it's not fun anymore. If I'm on stage and I'm not having fun, it's, yeah. it's not going to produce anything. You can have the best jokes in the world, but if you're not having fun on stage, the audience gets it. The audience gets that you do not want to be there. And yeah, I feel yeah, like that yeah. kind of is – not that I don't want to be there, but I feel like it, it comes across like I'm I'm doing a job more than having fun. Oh, and the definitely. crowd doesn't want to see that. Not even like a job. It's like you're you're grinding through it. Like you, it's um, For so long, I could not wait for the set to be over every time yeah. and now i'm like dying for 60 extra seconds Isn't that you know so funny yeah like i like i hear stories like john mulaney and stuff but i understand this i would really hope for shows to be canceled <laughs> whenever i first started <laughs> or an open mic to be canceled so i don't have to go to yeah. it tonight and there's still part of me that kind of no, feels oh, I, like that. i can relate i, you know I, I, I mean? understand what you're saying for sure I, I i remember talking to lorenzo and osha when we first or not when i first started they started yeah. before me when i first started and i remember lorenzo saying five minutes is gonna feel like nothing to you in mm-hmm. a short period of time and i was like no that's never gonna happen yeah five yeah. minutes is gonna feel like a fucking eternity yeah until i'm done doing comedy and now it's like yeah man i i can solid i can do a solid 15 right now yeah and that doesn't feel like enough yeah and that's exciting man like that's an exciting thing over two years Definitely. Like, oh okay things have changed yeah things are yeah. not where they were two years ago. it's inspiring to me to hear that and then to also see it um and like you said it's it's kind of rare for someone to have success so quickly yeah but what i've noticed is i feel like no one has their ear to the pulse of like the brand new comics like i do because i i'm still one of them what do you so mean so when i go to these mics i see people on their first time i see them on their second a lot and i i've yeah. watched i'm i'm in a mic every single night yeah and i've really been able to see other people you know who started at the same time move a little bit ahead of me maybe move past me funny? and it, it's yeah. inspiring like i love seeing it because there's a lot of really good brand new people yeah um my buddy mike zydell he yeah he's done it like i swear he's done comedy like seven times he placed in that contest and Bro. he kills almost everywhere he goes he's hilarious so yeah i don't think i've ever had a conversation with mike yeah, I know. Mike's another one. There, there. I've seen. I've seen a few people, and they just don't get out nearly enough either. Yeah. And so there is an element of uh, you can get good fast, but I think what happens is you get good fast, but you don't get in a good room for a long time. Yeah. That's where I was really fortunate to be put on some good shows and be in some good rooms to say, oh, those jokes weren't bad. I don't need to throw them away. Like it's just an open mic crowd that didn't get yeah. them. Yeah, Brandon Johnson mentioned that to me too when I won that competition. He's like, you can't rest on your laurels. You got to keep working. And yeah. I, I, I have been coming out to mics less in the last maybe three or four months. 
Or no, no, I'm sorry. Like earlier this year, I wasn't coming out to as many mics. And then Kaylee, a couple weeks ago, do you know Kaylee? Doom? Yeah, yeah. She, she, <laughs> you need friends like this in comedy. But she was like, you could be such a better comic if you act like you're funny. You yeah. could be such a better comic if you were coming out three or four times a week. Yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, you're you're correct. Yeah, you're correct, on. and I know it. And then you get angry, not at her, her or anybody's, but you get angry at yourself for not actually taking the time to yeah. build. And act, and you do start to rest on your laurels because you get yeah, busy, yeah. right? Work and putting together shows, and this and this and that and that. And it's like I don't want to go out to a mic where there's not going to be any people there anyway. And then yeah. you get these excuses that it's it doesn't you you don't um, that that fire goes away if you don't stay out almost every night. Yeah, yeah. And you it's need like it's like running or going to the gym or anything. Yeah. Do it 15 nights in a row, then you feel weird not doing it. Exactly. So you have to just stay in it. Right. Are you from around here originally? Yeah, yeah. You are. Where at? North Hills. Oh, you're from the North Hills yeah, area yeah, yeah. originally. Yeah. So what high school? I went to Hampton. Oh, you went to Hampton. I went to yeah. Highlands. Oh, okay. Cool. Did we play each other? I'm in pretty the football? sure they did, yeah. Did you play any sports? Oh, uh, let me ask. Cross country. No, no. <laughs> Why? Do I look like a runner? Yeah, you look like a runner. That's funny. I'm Maybe just, I uh, knew a runner who had the long hair and like the build like you. Oh, we all know a runner <laughs> who has the long Long hair and a gangly <laughs> build, but uh, <laughs> no, I down. played. I played a lot of sports when I was younger, but by high school, um, I got so good at drinking, I wanted to put all my focus <laughs> into that. So you know, I was trying to get a scholarship <laughs> for drinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you go to Did you go to college? Obviously not. I was drinking too much. Oh, in you high were school. drinking. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if you drank in high school, then it's like a precursor to drinking in college, though. I feel yeah, like yeah, you would have yeah. gotten a degree. So I, it was like I just finished quick. Yeah, it was like I graduated. Yeah, oh, okay. Early. Well, yeah. yeah, you did the summer. Know class. everything I need to know about this place. <laughs> what were you interested in high school? Um, were you interested in comedy? I mean, I was, but not to the point where I. I didn't put a foot anywhere near in the water. I didn't even think yeah. about it. I remember I met Aaron Kleiber oh like 10 years ago. Really? I, I used to run a fitness center, and he was a member there. I signed him up. And on the little application, you put career or, or occupation, employer, yeah. whatever, and he wrote stand-up comic. Holy And fuck. I wouldn't leave him alone. I was just, you know, I'm, really? I'm sure I bugged the hell out of him with just questions on oh, like, so you're a so stand-up funny. comic? What do you have to do to get started? I thought you needed to be like knighted by joe rogan and That's summoned in like, you know you have to get a permit and he was yeah. like you just start doing it man I, d I wasn't very happy with that answer i was like yeah, yeah but like, what, what do i mean? do yeah, what does that mean he was like find an open mic and go to it and 10 years later i finally did that and it was really cool because he was uh That's the hilarious. judge in that contest or one of the judges <gasps> really so for me it was like that moment and you've seen the movie rudy no oh well and it, it was like that <laughs> moment of like don't i know you it was cool yeah um, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as, I've, I've been interested in it my whole life. I don't think I knew how interested I was in it or that it was, like, a realistic thing you could do. It was like, yeah. I would watch comedy and be like, oh, that should have been a guy like me. Mm. And then never really worked towards it or did anything to move towards it. Yeah, because, but you said it, you don't know how to work towards it. I remember wanting to do it in college, and there was no, I mean, the internet, but, yeah. like, other than that, there was no... There was no hand that said, "Okay, this is how you should yeah. get into comedy." I the way I started was 2 years ago I was working in a company called Northwestern Mutual was selling insurance. And the big thing was that you had to talk to your friends, your family. It was like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, literally yeah. What, I, I should say all, all, all of life is. All the whole all of life, life is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> climate, man. It, climate. Exactly. Yeah. Uh but I uh, messaged my buddy Joe Marchi who uh, I know who Joe. went high school uh right across from me. It was I wanted to sell his parents insurance, so I sat down with him, and I'm like, what are your parents doing? He's like, <laughs> nothing. Ooh. Anyway, I'm starting to host this open mic at Hambones, because he hosted the Monday mic for a couple oh, okay. years, and that was right when he started hosting it, and that's how I got into That's how I got into it. I've told this story a million times. Nobody oh, on this fucking podcast. Cares. On this podcast. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing right after high school? Right after high school, I started working right away where at, at? at that same place where oh, okay. Aaron Kleiber became a, a member at that gym. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I worked there for like seven years, and then I uh, had, I guess you'd say, like a little bit of an identity crisis. I had been doing it for 60 hours a week since the yeah. day I finished school. You wow. Know? And um, then I moved out to California, and was it's so funny. I always say I go through <laughs> life backwards because I moved from L.A. to Pittsburgh and then started doing comedy. Oh, that's instead funny. of going in the reverse. But yeah. I'm, I'm glad I did it because 
those those really bad first sets. I feel like if I had done that in the LA scene, I yeah. would have never picked it up again. I would have yeah. probably felt like insecure, inferior. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's just it's really. I had a moment of to to get started. I had a moment of clarity because I remembered I wanted to play the guitar my whole life as a kid. Right. My older brother played, so I couldn't learn. I would be copying him. Oh, that's you funny. know. Yeah. And I got to about twenty, and I remember I had a moment of. You know, oh man, I really want to play the guitar, and I just paused and was like, "Well, then why don't you?" Why don't? Yeah. And I picked it up and had tons of fun with it. It didn't go, you know, to the moon and back, but I had tons of fun with it. I'm so happy that I did that. Obviously, now it's like my my thing I do to get into comedy. Yeah. So it's cool. All the decisions you make are very much more important than they may seem. What you're doing is very important. You know, yeah. if somebody asks you what you're doing, you should never say, "I don't know nothing." You know, what right. you're doing is very important. Treat it that way. Uh, you never know what doors it'll open up down the road or one thing or another. But I remember I just started and all of a sudden things went well and you start opening up more opportunities and learning more things. So it was the same way with stand up. It was like, what are you waiting for? Get started and, and you'll get better. Right. Why do you think people don't open those doors a lot? Because you said it. It's you, you said, OK, I've wanted to learn guitar all my life. Oh, why don't I just do it? Like yeah. the light bulb clicks like I. I there's so many things like that. Stand ups one. I was watching Ninety Day Fiance, that TLC show with my girlfriend. I wouldn't admit that. Oh. We can edit that out. No, right? we're gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna loop that the whole podcast. <laughs> I. Uh, but I was watching that, and there's so many people that speak a different language, and I was like, I'd really love to learn another language. Yeah. And then I thought, Am I gonna go my entire? Am I gonna go in my entire life knowing one language? Yeah. I think that's crazy. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to download Duolingo. I'm going to start learning French. I want to learn French or I want to learn. I know people who can speak fluent uh, Spanish. Yeah. I'm like, why Why would I not try and learn that? My girlfriend can speak pretty good French. Yeah. Cause she went to France and stuff. And I'm like, that's so impressive. Like, how am I going to go my entire life without doing that? Yeah. How am I going to go my entire life without doing a podcast, stand up? Yeah. Those sorts of things. Why well, do you think people think don't? That- why does that not click? I think it's it's obviously everything in this whole entire life is an individual basis. Everyone everyone yeah. is so important, and then we treat each other like we're all just parts of big like you know groups. And it's it, everyone's an individual, so that yeah. th- that answer is going to be different from each person. But if yeah. I had to guess, things get difficult as you get older. You you stop learning. You know, yeah. you, you you can you always learning. be learning. Your brain is plastic; it is always changing, and that's actually a new scientific discovery within like the last 10, 12 really? years. They used to think that your brain's fully developed around twenty one. That's why they let you drink. Then you know, okay, right. you shouldn't screw up too badly. You've got all the tools you're gonna ever have. Right. And now they've learned the brain is plastic. The same reason when a stroke victim, you know, they make them do crossword puzzles and different exercises. It's because yeah. your brain is plastic; it can repair itself. Are you it's plastic? growing. Yeah, like huh. plasticity. Oh, it, interesting. It, it's it, it's able to change. Oh, okay. In, what okay. I'm, yeah. in that sense of the word, but yeah. uh, I would say the reason people don't follow something they have an interest with, if I had to guess, I would think it comes mainly from a place of either embarrassment or shame or yeah. Uh, people don't like to fail. Failure right. is a very bad feeling. As, right. as a comic, I, that's one of my favorite things that I've learned is <laughs> failure's okay. It's going to happen, and look, you're fine. Rip the Band-Aid off. It doesn't hurt that bad. Get back right. up and try again. But I think people uh, people have a natural tendency to want to avoid things that are uncomfortable. Sure. That's like an evolutionary yeah. trait. I don't want to feel that. That feels bad. But if you're willing to take those chances, it opens up more doors and... To live is to struggle, you know? Yeah. So get out there and struggle a little bit or you're not really living. Yeah. that's I completely agree with yeah. you. I, I've, I've thought about that more in the last two or three years. It's like, why am I... I think stand-up help with that. I think Absolutely. that I think that is the thing that... I think... Not everybody, but like... I, can you imagine if everybody was forced to do two open mics in their entire life? Oh, like, goodness. what would that feel like? Do you understand what I'm that's saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's, people have the theory of like... Everyone should be forced to work in the military or to join the military yeah. for two years. Yeah. I think I like your idea more. Everyone yeah. should be forced to do two <laughs> open mics, and then I feel like everyone would uh, be a little more reserved with their opinions and judgment oh, right. of others. They, you know. Yeah, that's it. And what you said, your brain is is the ability to learn is still there. I look at I love my grandma. She's eighty three years old, but she's her, to her she's done learning. Right, she's done yeah. trying to figure things out. And she's been that way all my life. Like she, she just does not want to learn anything. Yeah. And 
and experience things. And I look at so many people, even in their 40s and 50s, to say, I'm done, man. I got yeah. children. I have jobs. And there's I, I don't know those like the struggle of having a, a mortgage or yeah. children or, a, you know, a. Having um, to do laundry. Well, I'm just laundry. joking. <laughs> having to do the fucking dishes. Yeah, yeah. But 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 you know what I'm saying? It's I can't believe um, those a, things will annoying. those things will limit and hinder your uh, willingness or your likelihood of going out and trying something new. Yeah, You're locked into man. your mortgage. Why yeah. don't I move? I've always wanted to just move up into the woods and start fishing and camping and live off the land. Why don't you? Because you're locked into a thirty year mortgage. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you just you won't follow your heart on those things. And the world needs a. Uh, needs those things to you know that both both types of people make the world go round right a wandering exactly. aimless artist and a person who is uh it's like the contrast between order and chaos you know you, they they kind of work they coincide and work yeah one with the other i get it i get it do you read a lot i don't even know how to read you don't know no. how to read. <laughs> <laughs> well listen there enough. are people who are like dyslexic i was yeah, like oh, no, oh, fuck, like, oh, oh yeah. fuck i don't want to no i uh <laughs> i don't read much yeah uh, har- hardly at all, which is so I bad. Don't either. And I it, don't either. It, it, your brain doesn't. It, that's one of those things that really helps your brain grow. Yeah. I try to write. That's uh, you know kind of fills in for that. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a blessing for something like YouTube. I'm on YouTube way too much. That's yeah, why you can't understand. get into conspiracy theories with me because oh, I'll just go. just go. I'll be gone. You won't. It, you won't get me back. I get <laughs> it, man. I can tell you who every me- every winner of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is. Nice. I love watching. Who yeah, wants yeah. To be you like, get on YouTube and so what I've what I try to do is watch slightly less aimless, pointless stuff and something that might enrich you in some way. That's great. And uh, yeah, YouTube is is the new reading. And no wonder society's getting so crazy. Like a lot of TED Talks? I mean, I've watched the TED Talks. Yeah. It, YouTube is like doing cocaine. Just get a little <laughs> bit of it in you, and you'll want more. <laughs> and you'll want more. <laughs> you'll want you'll more. spend all night looking yeah, at frog yeah. videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll, you'll learn something. <laughs> what are your goals with comedy? Hmm. That's That kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, where... I've achieved them all. I need to set new goals because my goals were That's to have funny. fun and meet new friends. Yeah. And I have been able to do that. I can't even tell you how um, how happy I have been to have achieved those goals. It's like sometimes I sit around and I have to pause and say, this is exactly what you wanted to do. Right. I'm exactly – if it doesn't go one step farther for me, I'm very happy with it because I didn't think it would get this far. Okay. So. Um, I know I certainly don't have uh, delusions of grandeur where I think I'm going to be, you know, uh, standing in the middle of an arena, you know, yeah. or uh, on TV f- four nights a week or something, I understand. Yeah. which I don't think that would even interest me. I like being in a club and winning a room, you know, yeah. my goals are to walk into the next room I go to and try to win the people. You like winning the room. Yeah. That's yeah, how you have cool to look feeling. at it every time, man. Like that, that yeah. is such a cool thing to hear somebody so new. And here's the podcast is called usually wrong for a reason. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm two years into this. I have no yeah. experience in this, but it's fun to see somebody who just started and had so much success say, say that I've, I've seen people win competitions and stuff and, blast that they're gonna they're gonna go full time in the comedy like yeah. i'm fine but it, hearing you say you just you still just want to have fun with it and get better like that that's inspiring and i think that's inspiring for a lot of people to hear because i don't awesome. think that's the case a lot of the time yeah i mean it's like that with almost anything you're gonna any goal you try to set or anything you're you're not gonna be uh you're not going to be doing arenas if you can't win the open mic room at the Parkway <laughs> Theater on a Friday night. Right. You know, you're not going to move forward with it. So I try to really uh, keep that in perspective and just kind of one foot in front of the other and start walking. Yeah, I understand. How much time do I have? Oh, that's pretty good. I I can't stand getting calls from like clients during a podcast either because then i get all oh, what do they need if you take a call, no man, i do no call. i'm not taking a call that's where my phone should have been nice that's where the phone should have been I, I can't i hate people looking at a phone call like i'll take a date somewhere yeah, or i have yeah. taken a date somewhere in the past yeah i don't take one currently <laughs> my girlfriend was uh, <laughs> uh but like they'll pull out their phone like during the date i'm like okay well you can i don't want to be here yeah <laughs> anymore they say 
that we are now genetically prone 100 percent as a society for attention deficit disorder i have <laughs> i have strange views on attention deficit disorder sometimes i think it's fake and it's not a real thing other times i think you know everybody has trouble concentrating at times and yeah. if you don't you know use it or lose it if you let your brain wander all the time it's gonna wander yeah but then i know that there is huh. an actual uh you know, biological malfunction happening in your brain or right. neurological, I should say, malfunction. So it, it, they, they can map on your brain, you know, where the connections are and are not being made. So attention deficit disorder does now have more of a diagnosis. It used to be, you know, I have trouble concentrating in class. OK, kid, here's some speed, you right. know, um, where I know that's wrong. That's that's a misdiagnosis that can't or you know, uh, overdiagnosis at the minimum. Right. Um, but. What's happening now is on a society wide level, we all have attention deficit disorder yeah. in, in our brains now. Especially think about if you're a kid who was born with these phones. Like that's it. How man. old are you? I'm 25. Okay, so 25. you're you're even less so. I'm like I'm 31 as of uh, yesterday actually. Oh, happy birthday. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'm one of like the last few people in this uh, little generation of. I remember the world very well without the internet yeah. at all in it. I have vivid memories. And then I also have memories of it being new and uh, interesting and unique, but not so overwhelming in yeah. every single thing we did. You don't even order a pizza anymore. Everything you do is internet. Yeah. And there are kids who are six years old right now who are going to come into the world where they've had pictures of them on Facebook from the time they were Isn't born. They're documented. It's it's Orwellian is the word. Orwellian. Yeah, George Orwell. Like the Orwell. 1984. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Orwellian. It's very strange to me. I've thought about that, man. Like I even think about like what Snapchat. I've heard I heard Bo Burnham say this. I think on Pete Holmes podcast, but I thought about it a lot. It's like what is Snapchat doing to kids? Yeah. Like especially like young girls. Like with the you can remove all the blemishes on your face. I shouldn't even say young girls. Young girls ain't guys. Oh, that's horrible. Isn't that crazy, man? Like what is that gonna do ten years from now for like? like self bodily image issues in, uh, in in brazil and really all over the world now there are people who go into plastic surgeons and you know you used to say i want jennifer aniston's nose you know yeah. or whatever <clears throat> now they go in with their own photoshop snapchat filter picture Holy and say fuck. can you do this and so where is it going to lead i don't know i don't think anywhere good no here's a point i like to bring it? up with technology right with anything, there's compromise in anything. So if you go for convenience, there is a sacrifice on the other side of the coin you are making. What it is, I yeah. do not know. I use the example with GPS. GPS is great. You're safer. You're more convenient. You can get yeah. anywhere. Now, you do lose your innate sense of direction. Now, if you take a chimpanzee and it doesn't know where it is in the jungle, does that affect something else within its consciousness and its, in yeah. its being? Does that screw them up in some <laughs> way of, I don't know where I am. Do you feel less of a sense of uh, like, can it affect your confidence? You yeah. know, I don't know. I don't know exactly where I am right now. I'm going to have to GPS my way home. I yeah. don't think that's uh, so there is a compromise being made. What else we're sacrificing? I do not know. Even with these, the whole world has turned into seven second clips. Oh, and absolutely. I dude. hate to get political because all I'll ever do I'm is political. I'm the only So yeah. people are, people don't like to get political because they're like, oh, well, right off the right off the bat, you're going to make half the people mad. Yeah. I don't like to get political because right off the bat, I'm going to make all the people mad, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but we have this situation where pe I, I hear people say all the time, how is Donald Trump our president? And I said, I told you twitter was a bad idea nope you <laughs> reap what you sow and i'm i'm apart from the whole thing doesn't bother me one bit but we've gotten into this situation where instead of listening to like on tv we used to have those brief six minute interviews yeah now you have things like podcasts where you can actually hear a person's right. full opinion and that's good but on the other side of that coin is it's easy to have a 15 second viral video that either makes a person look good or makes a person yeah. look bad and that's what sticks in your head. Yeah. yeah, it's very strange. It is strange, man. I mean, it's it's the the attention thing. I think is is really interesting because I don't think I, <clears throat> I don't think my attention level is there from even when I was a child. Like I think about when I was in high school and I wasn't so tied to that piece of technology, my phone. And it's it's where where will my children be? What will my children's experience be like on Earth? And but <clears throat> but to your point too, I think we trade privacy for efficiency in a lot of in a lot of situations like i i'm a religious guy and there's like a book in revel there's a story in revelation that's you're 
everybody's going to have like a chip in you or something uh, like that. And you yeah, can't yeah. buy anything without that. You're like, paraphrasing, but it's in there. Yeah. And I've, I've talked to my parents about it. My dad's a meth or he was a Methodist minister. I'm like, yeah, my mom's a minister too. Oh, her, oh this yeah, became right. an eight hour podcast. Yeah, buddy. Right. But I've thought about that a lot. And I've, we've had a conversation about it recently and it's like, that that shit's scary to me, man. Because like Apple tomorrow could come out with a chip that's like, well, if you want to buy oh, it, something, just put it in your developed. finger, dude. It's like, been developed already. That's They're putting them scary. in people. I saw an advertisement at a bar where if you were willing to take one of these GPS chips, it's like the thing they put in their dog, and they put it in your hand, and it's small enough that you wouldn't be bothered by it in yeah. any way. And uh, they were giving it to you. You get free entrance into the VIP and bottle <laughs> service if you put a chip in your hand. Dude, fuck that. Those are man. the type of people. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't even envision a scenario in which I would be friends with that type of person. who would be like, yeah, it, chip dude. me so I can get bottle service. I can't do it. It's so, and it's scary, man. I, I, uh, now, now we're getting into the conspiracies yeah, because fine. I talk about, uh, here we are. <laughs> I talk about these, the, the new card where it used to be swipe it. Now it's put the your chip, chip in. That is MK Ultra mind programming to get you ready for saying, oh, yeah, it's your chip. We, we always have oh, a that's chip. that's funny. Like, it, your, your phone is a GPS you carry in your pocket, and people walk around, and they're like, the government's trying to watch us. Yeah, and you're helping them do it. You're you helping know? them do it. And uh, I'll tell you this. I, I got very, very far away from religion because yeah. I, I was just so smart that I knew the obvious answer to life's it. most yeah. infinite crazy questions. I was like, how— I love when people say that. I'm like, it's, it, maybe it's not as simple as you think. Is right. there a God or is there not a God? So many people just quickly are like, no, I'm not an it, idiot. Yes, so, yes, duh. No, no. Like, exactly. It, it, there might be a little more to something like that. Right. But what happened for me, well, it was a series of things that I went through that really opened my eyes again or o- opened my heart would be a better way. Yeah. It was almost like, in a sense, I was closing my eyes, more willing to close <laughs> my eyes to certain things that didn't sit well in my head with religion or theology in any way. Right. And opening my heart, and I I felt it different. It's It probably sounds crazy to some people or corny or cheesy, but uh, it's one of those things like when you feel it, you know it. Yeah. And reading the book of Revelation one night on YouTube at 3.30 in the morning, <laughs> like watching some video right. about all of the signs of the apocalypse that are now upon us. Oh my gosh, yeah. Man, there's things in the Bible yeah, I don't agree with. with. That, I don't man. know if I believe in Noah's Ark or man walking on water or water into wine. But I'll tell you what, they nailed Revelation. <laughs> I mean, the, the love, a generation of lovers of self. I mean, yeah. we take pictures of ourselves. Flash yourself back to 1985 and watch someone take a picture of their food before they eat it. And then go into the bathroom and take a picture of themselves in the mirror. You yeah. would say, you're an insane narcissist. What are you doing? And right. Here we are. Here we are, man. Mm-hmm. I could talk to you about this forever, and I feel bad that we have to be done pretty oh, quick you're here because I got to go. I, you're going to be back on soon. We're going to talk Excellent, about Excellent, man. I'm looking you're forward to it. You're going to be the it. quickest repeat guest I've had. All right, but, man. I'm, I'm going for that regular spot. How do you feel? Do you feel good? Medium well. Medi- oh, there. <laughs> and we brought it all the <laughs> way around. All the way around. Okay, so this is the last question I ask every, every single guest. Uh, I started dating Monica, my girlfriend, about a year and a couple months ago. Uh her friends asked me this question before we started dating. Kind of like test the waters on this guy and see if I'm like a good fit. So I'm going to ask you this question. So Trevor, you're at a bar. Night is going bad. Uh, the bartender was revealed to be a member, last remaining member of the KGB. He's been poisoning a lot of drinks. Uh, also, there's quick sand in the back. Has swallowed up the pool table. And a lot of TVs and a lot of Asian people. It's what kind of night. Jumanji universe is this? It's a bad <laughs> night. In general, but it is also karaoke night, and it is your job to save the entire night by song. What song are you singing? Give me one second Take here. Take your time. Take your time. Walking on Broken Glass by Annie Lennox. Why? I've never heard that. I honestly thought it would be a funny <laughs> one to pick if you haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. It's just one of those <laughs> songs you'd hear like in Giant Eagle while you're walking through. Okay. Uh, I probably maybe, heard it then. Maybe, uh, you know what? If you have to save the bar and save yeah, the Yeah, you have to save the night. Bare Naked Ladies, one week. Oh, great. And I don't look at the monitor and nail it. Okay, that's, Everyone's that's a fine big now. point to it. You don't look at the monitor. Don't look at the monitor, nail it. That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? Promote? Um, I guess Trevor Austin. I don't even know if I said my name this whole time. Trevor well, Austin. Well, I do an intro. Okay, cool. Everything. Trevor Austin. Trevor Austin 2-1 on Instagram. This weekend, I am doing two shows in Erie. I am doing uh, hosting the Millvale Music Festival, which is going to be a ton of fun. I'm hosting one of the when stages is that? there. That's Saturday, 
Okay. And then Saturday night, I'm at Goodfellas with the very good fellas of We Got Next. Oh, that's great. They're the best. Oh, they're, they're great. the best guys. I would say they, 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 really got they got now. They got now. They got now. Yeah. <laughs> they got now. Oh, that's funny. All right, man. We, thank you for, for doing this. You get to sign us off. You get to say anything you'd like. I've had people be inspirational. People say negative stuff. Say whatever you'd like. America. You heard it here first. <laughs> thank you, Jeremy.